I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I got, I can't wait any longer. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> okay, okay. Open, open, open. Okay. Uh, do we need to position the camera or just? No, it's fine. Just open. What? First, and while some may scoff at this, it is something that I personally desire, is a jungle green Nintendo 64. There's just something about transparent plastic and monkeys wearing ties that make it all the more necessary to add to my collection. Are you serious? Thank you, Chris. Oh, that is oh. All right, so you guys saw my Holy Grail video. That's uh, the video you need to post there. Yeah, uh, this is... Chris helped me uh, track it down. Chris from the Game Dad Show and my wife are conspiring uh, to, to make my life awesome. We're colluding. Uh, I've, I've wanted a Jungle Green N64 for years, and this is just a the thing. Controller too. Like the controller, too. The controller is gorgeous. The con <laughs> I, this, thank you so much. You're welcome. So yeah, it pays to know good people, and I can't deny it. Meredith and Chris from the Game Dad Show are two of the best. And a big thank you to the folks at Gamers in Control out in Salinas, California for sending me this gorgeous piece of machinery. Hey, if you guys are one of the 70% of people that aren't subscribed to the channel, you should do so right now because I'm doing two videos like this a week and I love hunting for retro games and playing retro games on the channel. So a little bit of a background here. I didn't set out to achieve my holy grail completion within a month of filming that video. Now they kind of bamboozled me here. I gotta say, Meredith and Chris conspired against me. Chris contacted me out of the blue and said, hey, hey, this thing's available. Would you be interested in picking it up? I said, yeah, absolutely. And then he wrote me back and he said, nope, sorry, it's already sold. And I was like, oh, eh, oh well, that's too bad. But they bamboozled me. They lied on me. Meredith and Chris conspired to get this for me and Gamers in Control sent it out anonymously so I had no idea what it was. When this box arrived from Meredith, I didn't know what the hell it was. It was just a big white box, so I left it on the table for it. And then I got it. And I've been sitting on this video for a month wanting to play on this thing. But as you guys saw, Corey and I went out last week and went game hunting. And I was able to pick up a few N64 games. I want to show them to you now. Now, Wave Race 64 is something that I had played before and I absolutely love. I think it is a wonderful racing game for the 64 and just controls so well and looks so good for the hardware at the time. Next up is Star Wars Rogue Squadron. One of my favorites and a game that I absolutely had to have. After that, Blast Core. Now this is a game from Rare, and I had never played it before, but I'd heard good things about it, so I'm glad I picked it up. It's a very interesting title. Lots of different gameplay mechanics in play in this one. WCW NWO World Tour. It's not as good as No Mercy or WrestleMania 2000, but it's still a solid Aki developed game, and lots of wrestling fun here. Corey picked me up Jet Force Gemini, which is my favorite Rare game, and you'll actually see more footage of that later on. But this is my favorite Rare game for the 64. Even more than Conquer, more than Donkey Kong, more than Banjo. Jet Force Gemini was my thing. And the game that I have held on to the longest for my N64 collection that has actually been on my Star Wars shelves for a while was Star Wars Episode One Racer. Now look, it's great to have this console in my life and I am ecstatic that it is here, but what good is a console without my favorite games? Let's take a look at 10 of my favorites right now. If you'd have told me when I first played 1080 Snowboarding and Cool Borders 2 on the PS1 around the same time that this would become one of my favorite subgenres of gaming, snowboarding, I would have laughed in your face because I didn't have any inclination to ever play a snowboarding game to this point. But games like 1080 and Cool Borders gave me something that I needed. Living in Florida and being a transplant from the north, I missed the winter, I missed the cold, I missed the snow. And this gave me a chance to experience it in a very warm climate. Now while, yeah, that's not exactly the same thing, it's definitely still a million degrees and 100% humidity down there, it was a little bit of an escape and was something that I valued and treasured to this day. I still love snowboarding games. The SSX series is my favorite franchise for extreme sports. But this one, this is what got me there. You can't go wrong with Conker's Bad Fur Day. Conker's Bad Fur Day is what happens when you take Banjo-Kazooie, drop it on the floor of a dive bar, roll it around on the ground a little bit to get a little bit of grime on it, and then you end up with this absolute masterpiece of a game. Now this isn't for everybody. There's definitely some language here that people won't appreciate, and some of the subject matter is a little bit raunchy, but you know what? For me, especially at the time of its release, Conker's Bad Fur Day hit every button that I needed it to. I love this game, I think it plays great, and I think it looks wonderful, but the best part is the music. It sounds so good, and I can listen to it to this day. I am the great Mighty Pooh. 
The Walmart Supercenter in Cape Coral, Florida had two arcade games in its lobby. Ivan Iron Man Stewart's Super Off-Road and Cruisin' USA. And both of them got my fair share of quarters. Cruisin' USA, though, blew my mind because this was an arcade racer that just hooked me from jump. I loved the fact that you had to hit checkpoints to keep going, and it was always a race against time and ability to keep the game moving forward. You could play for hours on one quarter if you were skilled enough, but one mistake and you were done. And when this came out on the N64, the opportunity to play this game and master it without having to lose quarters just was everything I needed. I love this game to this day, and I will continue to play Cruising USA for years to come. One of the things I admired the most about Nintendo with the N64 was the amount of innovation that they showed, and nowhere was that more apparent to me than with the advent of something very different than anything we'd experienced so far with Pokemon, and that's with Pokemon Snap. This is basically an on-rails shooter, kind of like House of the Dead, or Time Crisis in the arcades where you're just kind of there to take pictures. Now, you're not catching them all in the traditional sense. You don't throw Pokeballs at them to keep them in your collection. Instead, you're in an all-terrain vehicle, taking photos to add them to Professor Oak's visual representation of every Pokemon in the Kanto region. The game walks the fine line of a simple design with brilliant execution, which is exactly what you want to do when you're trying something new. I cannot wait for the sequel later this year on the Switch. While every game that Rare released on the N64 was magical, the one that did it for me the most was Jet Force Gemini. And I realize that's a bit of a dark horse pick when things like Banjo-Kazooie exist, but Jet Force Gemini for me just hit every note of this sci-fi starved gamer that wanted something new and different and didn't involve characters that I knew intimately well from Star Trek, Star Wars, or the like. I love everything about Jet Force Gemini from the absolutely ridiculous look of the game to the fantastic combat system. I know for some people this isn't the game that they wanted, but for me, it was perfect. There are certain games that just feel fast, and F-Zero has always been one of those games, and F-Zero X on the N64 is no exception to that rule. I love this game because it presents a unique challenge that a lot of racing games on the N64 don't present. They all feel kind of sluggish. Everything from Excitebyte 64 to Mario 64 doesn't quite have that sense of speed that F-Zero provides. And that's kind of always been the case with this series, but I was so happy to see Nintendo deliver on the series with the N64 version of F-Zero. This game is fantastic. It's a little bit pricey to find nowadays, but the game is definitely worth tracking down because nothing else on the system is gonna give you the sense of speed that F-Zero X does. When you look at the overall library of the Super Nintendo, one thing stands out, and that is the absolute just dearth of RPGs that are on it. And when you look at the N64, you realize there's not really any. But there was one great one, and that's Paper Mario, my favorite RPG on the system. A spiritual successor to Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo, this game takes everything that Mario RPG did and just makes it better. The humor is amped up, the combat is better, the graphics look better. The game is just an absolute masterpiece. This led into an absolutely fantastic series of games that are still going today on the Switch with Paper Mario and the Origami King. There was just something about Majora's Mask that spoke to me more than Ocarina of Time did. Now, I know for most people on the N64, 90% of you are going to say that Ocarina of Time was your Zelda, and that's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from that game. But for some reason, I just never got into it, and I still don't get into it. It's just something that doesn't hold my attention. But Majora's Mask, between the story, the characters, Skull Kid, I love the music and the look of the game, Majora's Mask does it for me. It's my favorite Zelda of the N64 era, and it's something that I've gone back to and played numerous times. It was the one I bought first when it was re-released on the 3DS over Ocarina, and it's something I've still gone back to to this day. There's a lot to dislike about the Star Wars prequels, but Episode One Racer is not one of those things. Longtime viewers of the channel will know how much I love this game. It's something I featured in an eShop video a few months ago, as well as on my list of favorite Dreamcast games, so it should come as no surprise that it's showing up here as well. And while, yeah, there's a lot to dislike about the prequels, the pod race scene is not one of them, and the characters in the pod racers are definitely not to be disliked either. With a huge cast of characters, customizations that you can do to each pod, as well as just tons of tracks and great music throughout, this game isn't one you should overlook. Just because it's licensed doesn't mean it's a bad game. Out of all the games released on the Nintendo 64, none have given me more hours of enjoyment than WWF No Mercy. 
And it's not just the enormous cast of characters that come preloaded on the game, no. This game has one of the deepest creator wrestler systems you've ever seen. And yeah, while the game might not look as good as the current WWE 2K games or anything that might come down the road from AEW, I can guarantee you that nothing released from either of those two companies are going to come anywhere close to what No Mercy gave us. This was lightning in a bottle. Even games Aki has developed since or before then haven't recaptured that magic. No Mercy is the best. I won't lie to you. Being able to knock this beautiful piece of machinery off of my Holy Grail list so early in the year it's just kind of inspiring. I'm going to be building my N64 collection, adding more games to it, and I definitely want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. Let me know what games I should be on the lookout for. I know one that I'm really, really going to be looking for is Beetle Adventure Racing, and the sick part of me also kind of wants to get Superman 64. I don't know why. I think it's probably just the comic book fan in me, but I think I'm going to pick that one up. I might actually look for that this weekend. We're headed up to Grand Rapids. If you enjoyed today's video and have not yet already done so, be sure to give it a thumbs up down below. It lets me know you enjoy the content we're creating. We'll keep making more stuff like this. And if you have not already done so, please be sure to subscribe down below. And while you're there, ring that notification bell so you can stay up to date with everything we've got going on. I've got some stuff coming up next week where I'm going to be looking at this month's Humble Choice Bundle. And I think I might be modding a Nintendo GameCube. We'll see. Until next time, guys, I have been Jay. I appreciate you being here and spending a little bit of time with me. We are on our way to 1,000 subscribers. And I just can't wait to get there. And I have you guys to thank for believing in the channel and sharing what we do. Until next time, be sure to play more games, stay square, and take care. I'll talk to you soon.